Hi everyone, Max, and here, welcome to my latest Galactic Civilizations 3 Let's Play. This time around, I'll be playing with the newest expansion to the game, which is called Intrigue. And it's actually available now when you're watching this video. It came out on the 11th of April, 2018. Before I get into showing off all of the new features of the new expansion, I would just like to thank Stardock, who not only provided me with an early copy of the expansion, I've actually been playing it last week or two and been thoroughly enjoying it but I'd also like to thank them for actually sponsoring this let's play uh, very very grateful for them for doing that many of you who have been watching uh, my channel for quite some time will know that I've covered Galsifri a heck of a lot in the past I've done guides and let's plays and this let's play will be much like the previous let's plays I've done except of course I'll be showcasing the new expansion Intrigue as well as its company and patch the 3.0 patch. So before I get to uh, select my uh, starting civilization I'll be using, I'll actually mention some of the new features. Uh, so basically the key features of the expansion are new governments, uh, which is uh, completely new to the expansion. There was kind of uh, governments before, but certainly not like they are now. Uh, there's been a huge amount of improvement there. So you can now basically have cabinet members and elections and the governments actually unlock certain features. You can get really cool bonuses. You can even get new ships via the governments. So yeah, I'll be showing off governments a heck of a lot later coming up. And they're unlocked via certain texts or certain traits or even ideologies. There's also new crises added to the game which you have to uh, get through basically. They are bad events, but uh, you can have a positive reward for completing them. So there are renegades, or revolutions. I believe there is a parasitic uh, crisis event that you have to deal with potentially, and even a space monster that can appear at the edge of your territory. There's also an update to the Galactic Bazaar, so you can now trade galactic resources via it. And also, there are now commonwealths, so if your empire gets a bit too unyieldy, uh, then you can actually separate certain of your uh, planets into a new empire, uh, which is subservient to yours and will basically uh, generate wealth and give it to you throughout the course of the game. You can now also keep up to date with all of uh, what's going on within the galaxy with a new Galactic News Network feature. So before I decide to pick the Empire that I'll be playing throughout the course of the Let's Play, I'll quickly uh, mention this screen which pops up when you enter the game. So it's just the key features of a new patch mentioned here. If you want to check out the full patch notes, you can do that online. I'll pick out a couple of things to mention here, but I'll discuss the rest throughout the course of the Let's Play. So there's been a couple of new planet types added recently. Extreme worlds are actually more frequent now. So there are new corrosive worlds and bacterial worlds. And certain world types are basically more easily colonized by certain life forms than others. For instance, carbon-based life can easily colonize corrosive worlds, but synthetics cannot. And bacterial worlds are vice versa. They could be colonized easily by synthetics, but not by carbons without a certain tech. So there's uh, other changes here as well, but I'll be discussing more about them later. So let's pick our civilization that I'm actually going to be playing with throughout the course of the game. As you can see here, there's uh, quite a lot of civilizations that you can actually choose from, especially if you happen to own all of the DLCs like I do. So there are Terrans, for example. In fact, there are quite a few different types of Terrans these days and other races besides. Uh, in Galsa 3, though, of course, you don't actually have to pick one of the pre-made civilizations, should you not wish to, you can actually create your own civilization or even uh, acquire one from the Steam Workshop. Uh, if I quickly look in here, you can see this feature in more detail. So you can really uh, go to town on uh, all of the options that you can have for your civilization, different traits, different uh, priorities. You can give your civilization a backstory should you wish. I did actually do a let's play with a custom race once uh, but way back in uh, patch 1.4 it was playing on hardest difficulty with literally all of the worst traits you could possibly do. That uh, was a very fun let's play. For this let's play I'm just going to play as one of the default races and I'm going to be playing as a race I've been meaning to play for a very long time 
uh, a race I particularly like, and that is the Drenjin Empire, everyone's favourite bad guys, basically. So, uh, they happen to uh, be profoundly evil and warlike civilization, exceedingly clever and vicious. There are few beings capable of meeting a Drenjin and not becoming its next meal. So I'm basically going to be playing in that style as well. Uh, be uh, very malevolent and uh, try and conquer all of the species that happen to be in the galaxy. Uh, the Drenjin, uh, the capital is Drenji, and they are led by Lord Konar. Like all of the other civilizations, they start with a survey ship to find anomalies and scouts. A uh, couple of uh, abilities they happen to have, uh, they are slavers, so they gain access to slaving technologies and earn additional ideology points each time you conquer a world. And they are also conquerors. Their legions start at twice as good as anyone else's and they receive 2,000 and a half uh, upon billion credits upon conquering a planet. So that really keeps up the war momentum to pay for all of the ships that uh, we'll no doubt have with them later on. They are a carbon-based life form, so I kind of mentioned that a bit earlier, uh, with uh, certain worlds that they're able to colonize and uh, not able to colonize certain other ones. They are productive, so they get a bit of a production bonus to social manufacturing. I think the plus one is about 10% production boost. They are economical, so they actually get a bit of a bonus to wealth as well. They happen to be discontent though, probably because of all of those slaves, so their morale's a bit worse. They are militant, so they get 20% boost to their shipyards, but are poor traders, so they have less credits via trade routes. They are brutal, so that modifies the success of planned invasions, and uh, that's actually on top of the fact that their soldiers are actually uh, really damn good as well. And they are tough, so that actually means they get more hit points compared to other civilizations. So moving on to the galaxy settings, I've actually pre-selected all of these already, but I'll go through them in detail just so you know what's going on basically. I'm going to be playing on a huge galaxy map, which is, yeah, pretty damn huge, frankly, but it's uh, definitely not the biggest map type that you can find within Galaxy 3, but it's definitely big enough for a Let's Play. The Ludicrous map is pretty damn crazy. Uh, you can see here that we've now got a recommended system uh, feature, which uh, didn't exist before. You actually need 32 gig of uh, RAM to actually play on a Ludicrous map. Supposedly some people were playing this not realizing that the computer couldn't handle this before. Uh, yeah, my computer can't actually either. So yeah, I'm going to be playing on a huge map, which is yeah definitely big enough anyway. Uh, I'm going to be playing with five different opponents. Uh, now, normally this map recommends 12 players. I think that that's maybe a bit too much of a recommendation. Uh, arguably, if you have that many, you could find yourself with all the empires having very few uh, colonizable planets, depending on the settings you pick. If I was to make a suggestion, and I'll be making lots of suggestions for little things throughout the course of the Let's Play, I think that maybe uh, it should show somewhere here how many planets, how the worlds you can expect with the settings that you actually pick. That would give you much more of an idea about how many recommended players uh, you should probably select. I know the map settings pretty well though, and uh, yeah, the way I like to play, I prefer less uh, players. So yeah, I'm going to be playing with five. And uh, yeah, you can see here the five I'm going to be having. As a um, adversary for the Drenjin, I'm going to be picking the Altarians, who are benevolent in ideology. They're more than likely haters. And I'm going to have three random other civs, so it could be any of these other ones. Uh, as well as being a huge map, I'm going to have scattered stars, so that's less likely to have like clumps, which is the case with tight. So like uh, potentially, if you had that, you could have one empire with most of the planets near to them, which wouldn't be uh, too much fun. So I prefer scattered, and it kind of uh, looks better as well, in my opinion. So yeah, what else should I mention? The other game settings here, uh, customized gameplay options. I've kept most of these to default, I believe. I'm going to disable tech brokering. Uh, that basically means that you can only trade techs that you discover personally. 
rather than trade everything that you actually happen to acquire. So I'm going to have occasional uh, United Plants. I'm going to have a bit more uh, minus sieves. Uh, galactic events are occasional. Research rate is normal. Game pace is normal. Rig, mega events. So all of that's pretty much uh, default. Now, Galaxy difficulty. I'm actually making a change to what I normally play on. I've always played on Godlike previously. But in a recent patch, I think it was 2.8, but I haven't been able to find the uh, patch notes for this. The AI has had a huge bonus in speed at the higher difficulty levels. So in fact, on the hardest two difficulties, I've seen colony ships very early on have movement of 20 odd, which is completely crazy. And that really has changed things uh, significantly. I've always felt that the AI has uh, underperformed in many regards because it's lack movement. It just didn't know how to uh, go about getting it like a human player would. But uh, yeah, these difficulty levels are pretty insane now. Uh, previously, one way to win the game would have been to out-colonize the AI. And by doing that, you would have more planets. Uh, so you would be able to catch up on the huge uh, production bonuses that the harder difficulty AIs have. Uh, well, that's not really possible anymore when the AI has 20-odd uh, movement colony ships almost straight away. So I'm actually going to be playing on the Genius level, which actually still has a movement bonus. It's going to be very hard to uh, beat the AI, um, yeah, colonize, out colonizing the AI even on this level these days. So yeah, that's a bit of a change to normal, but level than that, it's going to be pretty much uh, normal for the Let's Plays that I do. Uh, other than that, uh, I could have gone godlike, but I definitely want this uh, Let's Play to last a certain amount of length, especially since it's sponsored. So yeah, we'll go with Genius. I haven't uh, played much on godlike at all since the uh, recent uh, changes, which I think were back in 2.8 with the difficulty. It was an AI patch. Uh, these galaxy options, uh, let's go through them. So I'm actually uh, using a slight mod as well. I kind of like to use a mod to guarantee a certain amount of planets. So I've changed the map size deaths file. It's very, very easy to mod uh, Galaxy 3. I'll leave a link in the description as well as other useful links that you may want to check out uh, if you want to know more about that or just ask me in the comments and I'll tell you how to mod your game. So the mods I did is basically to change the maximum amount of habitable planets uh, from 150 normally on a huge map down to 50. But in reality it will be more like 65 planets, 70 planets maybe on this map. Because uh, it doesn't include uh, the Empire's starting systems and maybe the uh, minor civilizations that are in the game as well. So yeah, probably be 65 to 70 planets on this map, which is more than enough for a Let's Play. That's going to take a while, definitely. Uh, so with these settings, uh, basically we're almost guaranteed that amount of planets, like 99.99%. Um, what I'd like to do with this stem, because I've modded the game, is uh, go for certain options that make the game look pretty, frankly. So I'm going to have less stars, but they're going to be scattered all over the place. But the stars that exist are going to have lots and lots of planets, like our solar system happens to have. And uh, the solar systems that have lots of planets are often going to be having more than one habitable planet. So perhaps like the uh, Trappist system that was uh, recently discovered, there's supposedly four planets in the Goldilocks zone within uh, that system. There's actually three within ours, I think actually Venus and Mars are kind of counted, but they're not really that habitable at the moment. Uh, yeah, so those are those options and uh, Like I mentioned earlier extreme planets are now more frequent. In fact, I've actually decided to go common on this Increase it even more so we should see a lot of those which could be an issue if we come up against certain empires that are easily able to colonize extreme worlds I'm gonna keep the pirate bases on occasional on this difficulty the pirates now have a movement of about six when once they had a movement of one so that's a big change to them, and on the hardest two difficulty levels, I think they start with a movement of 13, which is pretty damn crazy to say the least. Uh, resources, I've kept these mainly to default, so common frequency for resources, common for asteroids. I really like Neblas. I've, uh, yeah, been meaning to make a mod with Neblas for ages to make them impassable to give the game a bit more terrain. 
Um, if well, or when there is a Galsiv 4 or perhaps a future DLC, I would like to see more terrain features. And I think there's a lot of things that could be done with Nebulas. Uh, Precursor relics, I've kept a rare. I like to put uh, Ascension Crystals on random, this uh, victory type. It's highly unlikely I will go for this uh, victory type, even if we get abundant crystals. Uh, but yeah, I like to put it on random. Black holes I've kept to uncommon. And uh, last thing here is anomalies. I've kept them to common. Okay, so let's take one last look at the galaxy settings I'll be using. And yeah, I think I am now ready to get started. Okay, so this is the Drengen's welcome screen, and we've kind of covered their strengths and weaknesses already, so I'll skip this bit. And let's take a look at our starting location. There's a homeworld Drengen. You can actually see a black hole over here, and there's a nebula there, so pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, this is a more zoomed out view. So what I'm really hoping for here is a lot of stars nearby. Uh, you don't really want to be stuck in a corner with uh, yeah, no stars nearby because it's unlikely then that you'd be able to uh, colonize a lot of them. Uh, the aim coming up now is to uh, yeah, colonize a heck of a lot and uh, hopefully more than the AI is going to be able to which would certainly make things a lot easier. But uh, yeah, that's not so easily done even on this difficulty at the moment with the AI's movement bonuses. Uh, every game, uh, your capital is actually slightly different, the positioning of certain resources in the capital tile itself. So let's see if we've got lucky here. Right, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, the capital itself is up here. So capital does give adjacency bonuses and I'm not going to easily be able to get them when it's on its own. There's a construction bonus over there. And there's... Uh, arable land, which is, yeah, the new food. So you can normally basically now build farms on these. Uh, you pretty much always would get one farm on your capital world, no matter which race you're playing as, I think. It's pretty rare that you get more than that. Well, maybe with some races you might get. I haven't checked out all of the new uh, capitals with this farm change for all of the different races yet. I think that's pretty good, though. There's a lot of room here. I could get a lot of production. You can get, I think, with a dredging six terraforming tiles later on so hopefully i could get a lot of this uh around here maybe come up towards the capital till to get adjacency bonus should i wish so uh, yeah i quite like that capital sometimes i definitely would uh, be uh, tempted to restart because uh yeah it is completely random now uh with in regards of uh, your capital pretty much no matter whomever I would be playing, the first thing I would do is always buy a shipyard. The reason to do this is basically so you can start making ships straight away. And if you don't, you're basically wasting your ship construction. You can see that I'm not really getting anything yet. But uh, I'm actually able to rush this and it will cost me 600 billion credits. It's quite a lot. That's what, a fifth of my starting treasury gone already? But it's definitely worthwhile doing. And um, because with a Drenger, of course, we actually get some decent uh, bonuses, a nice 20% uh, there. In regards of, uh, yeah, uh, nearby uh, location, there is some asteroids. That's definitely going to be very useful. The more asteroids, the better. So when they come within my influence, I will actually, in effect, get more raw production, which is what. Yeah, it really determines how much production you're going to have. You can have all of the percentage bonuses in the world, but if your raw production is next to nothing, it's really not going to matter all that much. So, yeah, those asteroids will come in handy later on. And uh, with the new farming change as well, uh, well, basically, raw production and population has changed a number of times. At one point, the uh, population... Well, basically, the square root of your population would equal raw production. That's no longer the case. It's now on a one-to-one -one basis. So, yeah, you get a lot more, potentially a lot more, out of your population than you once did. But maybe it's harder to get higher levels of population now. Okay, so that's Drengy for the time being. 
since I've actually made a shipyard, I should actually use it. So let's take a look in here. And uh, we can see some Drangin ships. And I have uh, been playing recently as a Drangin, so I've actually created a number of designs myself that I intend to use a bit later on. Uh, within Galsiv Florida, and even Galsiv 2 actually, uh, you can, uh, yeah, create uh, your own ship designs. You can, uh, yeah, create all sorts of different things. There's actually a lot of uh, ships on the Steam Workshop that people have created from Klingon cruisers to x wings So, yeah, if you're so inclined to do that, you can definitely do so. And if I come into the design ship screen here and just use that design, you can see the design modes uh, where you can pick a hull and, uh, yeah, then you can uh, look for different parts and add them onto your ships to uh, make them look pretty unique. And there's all tons and tons of options uh, as well where you can uh, animate parts, rotate parts. Yeah, so you can create crazy designs if you're so inclined. Right, let's come out of there though. To be honest, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that in uh, this Let's Play though because it takes a lot of time. I'm just going to be sticking with uh, normal designs and just adding on components, which I should also show, shouldn't I? So there's various components within the game, like different drives, uh, weapons, range modules, sensors. Uh, if you want to have a colony ship, you need a colony model. If you want a module, if you want to make star bases, you need to construct a module. If you want to find anomalies, you need a survey module. I'll be talking more about that later on, since we do start with uh, a ship that has a survey module. So in terms of the actual ship I want to make uh, here, I think... Where is my... Uh, yeah, let's have a look at this again. Okay, my shipyard's there. I'm going to start with this occupier, which is a default one. So this has one drive on it and also a few range, I believe. And uh, I have created that, but it has no drive on it, but it is cheaper. But I think in this case, I'm prepared to spend an extra turn making that. Okay, so that's done. Next, let's go and pick our research. So we get to see the Drenjin bot who gives us, um, well, let us know a bit about the tech, I guess. So there's a number of options here that we can choose from, but you can actually, of course, come into the tech tree to get much more of an idea. So there are four uh, groups, and all of the tech trees, depending on which race you play, are different. So yeah, the Drenjin are uh, definitely more... Uh, well, the Drenjin like slaves, of course. There's a lot of slave-related st uh, stuff in here, like the fighting pits tech is uh, unique to them for instance and yeah you get a decent amount of uh, morale off that actually so the tech tree is quite linear and it has uh, actually been um, streamlined I guess a bit recently uh, I think certain things may have been moved that were in other areas or even removed uh, if I have a look in yeah, here in the Drenjin, these precursor stuff, I think that used to be an exploitation. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just for the Drenjin or if that's all races, but um, yeah, I'm sure that didn't used to be here. And of course, with uh, Intrigue and uh, Patch 3.0, there's uh, yeah, a few new things added within the tech tree here and there. Uh, in regards of what I'm actually going to be picking here, I'm going to be going for movement early on. If I'm going to colonize a lot, I need to uh, be able to get where I'm going pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, and I would definitely recommend my uh, colony spamming video if you want uh, more information on how to colonize well. So, yeah, that will be up in the cards. Right, let's get that first, then I can talk more about other techs a bit later on. Okay. So that's research done, planet. Uh, let's move our ship next then, our starting survey ship. So this can survey anomalies and we happen to have one there, a capsule, which is actually a pretty good anomaly. That's going to take five turns as well. So yeah, I'm inclined to head off towards that anomaly. 
but really you're with your starting uh, survey ship you definitely want to be finding suns as well stars to see if there's any habitable planets on them so I'm going to be doing a mixture of finding anomalies and going in direction of planets here but um, yeah let's start out uh, by coming down here I'm not sure which direction I should really head off in mainly with my colony ships coming up. Probably around there there's a lot of stars in that direction. Um, I could with my survey ship actually come and loop around there rather than get that capsule. I think I'm actually going to do that, you know. I think it's more important than that capsule, although that capsule uh, would uh, potentially be pretty good giving extra credits or maybe even a um, tech boost, a small one, 15% I think. That's actually a precursor anomaly so that gives a very good reward but it's heavily defended as you can see there and there's no way in hell this survey ship would be able to take down uh, what would uh, be there. So I'm not even going to try. Right, so that's the movement there. There's still more to uh, do this turn now. I haven't actually place the building here. The Drenjin's work camp is kind of the industry building but it combines uh, a number of uh, things actually which is pretty rare. Most of the other species have more specialized production but this has morale and population and even research later on. So I'm definitely going to be wanting to get a lot of these up if I wanted to uh, get production going even research for later. So I'm going to place it over here because it happens to be a nice uh, production bonus. You seem to always start with one of these on Drangy, but it's uh, entirely random where it is and what type it is, but that's a pretty damn good one here. So let's get that there. And we'll make those three and I may even make more over there a bit later on. Highly likely actually, but that will do for now. I'm also going to turn off the auto upgrade improvements uh, thing there, I don't really like it on, I wish there was an option to turn off on all planets to be honest. Uh, yeah, so you don't always want uh, stuff automatically upgraded. Right, so that's done and uh, there's another new feature now that I should uh, be showing you, but actually before I do that, let's come into citizens. I'm not sure this was always the case, but your actual starting, uh, you get a starting leader now. And uh, in this case, of course, it's Lord Kona. He's uh, doing, he's placed in the social construction part. Uh, later on, you can get citizens. This is if you've got the Crusade expansion, of course. And Crusade is, uh, yeah, I think it's the most important expansion, frankly, Crusade. If you haven't got it, then you should probably get it if you want to play a lot of Galsithry. And then maybe Intrigue is after that. Uh, let's check out uh, the victory screen. I think Stardock is selling Crusade with the game a lot now because it's so important. Uh, actually, not the victory screen. Uh, let's come into the civilization screen. I want to change this over to research. I think so. There's not too many options here at the moment, but at the moment, but uh, I think I prefer slightly research over social. I'm going to buy some of those work camps. Uh, right. So that's uh, great. Now this is a new feature here that, uh, yeah, from patch 3.0, the tax rate. Now your tax rate doesn't just affect your tax, it actually affects your approval as well. So arguably it's uh, yeah, approval uh, slider. Uh, I did have a bit of misgivings with this system. Very, in early versions of Galsif 3 there was, um, yeah, much more sliders and uh, production wheels that uh, were excellent in terms of uh, being able to manipulate your economy, but were actually too good and caused a ton of micromanagement. So it's really good that Stardock uh, replaced those. So it is a slight um, reversion back to that, but um, it isn't too much micromanagement with the tax rate I found, and it is uh, very useful, of course, since it's a slider, you've got a lot of control over things. Early on, I'm going to basically want to have no tax, and we're really not losing much for doing that, but later on we would be if I have no tax. So, your tax rate as well, well, these are your different types of incomes. So, you can get money from Commonwealth, a feature I'll be talking more about later on. Uh, tourism is back uh, for a while. I think there was only one race, maybe, that could have had tourism, but uh, now it's back for everyone and it works in a different way. 
Uh, GDP is just, um, I think that, I'm not actually 100% sure what GDP is from. I think it's, uh, yeah, down from your population actually. And uh, yeah, there you can see your taxes as well. Right, let's come out of here a second then. So the main reason I want to increase my approval at this point and uh, often throughout the game is because it gives bonuses. You can see them there. So we get a bonus to growth, rule production and influence growth. And yeah, at this stage especially, those are going to be very useful in getting things up and running. So yeah, this uh, that's where our basic net income is coming from, which is mainly down to our raw production. And it's an extra 5% bonus. Uh, tourism, it does mention it there, but it's not showing up here yet. It should do in a bit. Uh, right, let's get ending the turn. Okay, so uh, we have an idle ship here. Uh, let's continue up here. I yeah, sadly can't go and grab that yet, but uh, let's bypass this to have a look at that sun. See if there's any habitals up there. And let's also rush this work camp now, which is going to cost 237 billion credits. I got to be a little bit careful with my money. I don't want to be spending it all because there's uh, certain rather good things that I could be spending it on later. All right, approval's gone up a little bit, so our bonuses have gone up. Tourism thing hasn't turned up here yet. Not quite sure why, uh, but it probably will in a second. Uh, right, so let's end the turn. Okay, so... Let's move this on again, and I'll move uh, one there just to have a look for find the sun. So if you can actually see the sun, you can see what planets are there. And in this case, sadly there isn't, but there is more asteroids that I might be able to get within my influence later on. There's even a couple of resources. Doesn't mention what resources they are, but in this case I can actually see one. That's Promethean, which is a very, very useful resource. And, um, yeah, I'll be wanting to use that. Uh, there's actually a Lyrium there as well in that Nebula, which is very good for beam weapons, uh, for instance. Right, uh, let's move this uh, over here then and come up towards there. And did I rush this turn? No, that was last turn. So, should I rush that one as well? I think I will. So, probably don't want to go much below 1500, I would say. But, uh, yeah, I'm prepared to spend a bit currently. That gets done in a couple of turns. Let's end the turn. So, how's this doing? Only one more turn left on that. Great. Uh, let's come up here. That is... Uh, Tifi and Sally no more no have the planets to arrive there. Okay. Uh nothing to worry about yet, but I would like to see some have the planets uh sooner rather than later to be honest. Uh one recent ish change is this uh administration capacity. So this determines how many uh star bases and colony ships and survey ships and loads of other things. You used to not get a huge amount like this, but uh, on this map we actually start with forty. So that's going to be useful. I won't have to get administrators so much anymore. I can get these more specialized ones. Uh, you get a first citizen or a citizen every 10 weeks, 10 turns, basically. So we've got a little bit longer to wait for that, but not too much longer. Okay, so should I rush this one as well? I think I will. And I'm going to, yeah, keep on making these. I'm going to make... Uh, that those over there but I might not rush these ones it's down to two turns now which is pretty decent okay so approvals come up again still so we're getting more bonuses let's end the turn and if you're wondering yeah I'm gonna four percent three percent and three percent for those so yeah, all of that will add up and yeah our percentage based on the raw production course. Right, let's end the turn. 
and we've got our first event. So I think events are much more frequent now than they once were. This one, I don't particularly like this event massively. I would uh, much prefer to pick a malevolent pick, but the problem here is I would lose diplomacy and soldiering. Well, we have uh, excellent soldiers for being a drenching anyway, so this isn't so necessary, arguably for us. I'm going to take pragmatic, but uh, I'm definitely going to be taking malevolent next time. I think, and maybe I should take this anyway frankly uh, because uh, yeah I definitely intend to go malevolent with the uh, dredge and I think it's the best ideology overall anyway and I'll mention why later on but yeah this is a bit iffy decision frankly but we'll go for that uh, so first colony ship is done colony ships now you have to load a billion population on and you actually have a lot less population than you once did I think these days you used to have like 10 billion population to start. There's been a lot of measures to make colony spamming uh, more difficult, frankly. Uh, Stardock have done a lot to uh, yeah slow it down a heck of a lot. And uh, this is another thing that does that. So I'm going to press cancel for the time being. The reason why I'm doing that is just so I, have, um, I can choose which... Uh, exit point out of the shipyard I want to uh, move to otherwise it would just probably kick me out maybe in the nebula which wouldn't be great probably so what I'm planning on doing here with my colony ship is actually colonizing that world first now I wouldn't really do this previously to the yeah recent uh, situation we find ourselves with the game our recent patches and with intrigue especially a reason why I want to colonize, colonize this uh, soon is basically to... Well, when you get to your second planet, you actually unlock the government's uh, feature within Intrigue. Uh, probably the key feature within Intrigue. And you can see there, it mentions, own at least two colonies to start modifying your government. So there's much more reason to colonize this than there once was. Often I would just leave it until very late on. If the worst thing happens and uh, someone else nicked it off you somehow, well, your capital has so much influence that you would quite easily be able to get it back. So, yeah, I didn't use to colonize it early on, but that's kind of changed with Intrigue. So let's uh, get this out, uh, move down to here, and take the minimum amount out, which is a billion. This has uh, three movement points. I've actually got the tech this turn. I could have gone for... You have a colony ship, which would have I would have been able to get out a turn earlier, but I wouldn't be able to get over here so quickly. So it's yeah, maybe I could have done that, but um, yeah, I think maybe I hopefully chose the best option. Uh, artificial gravity came in this uh, wonder basically, uh, where you can get extra movement, but to make it I would need antimatter, which I haven't even seen yet, and it costs a lot of production and it gives a adjacency bonus to research could get it maybe later on we'll have to see the next tech choice for the Dren drenjin is actually pretty difficult these days uh, often uh, previously I would always just go straight for all of these speed boosts uh, without exception but uh, I am very very tempted to go for this with a drenjin because it's pretty damn good uh, even at this stage of the game so the reason why that is the case is me probably down to this uh, basically uh, we get an upgrade to the labor camps and you can see there on the bottom ish uh, there's actually a bonus to research and this is very rare if that works out like a point of um, raw production almost just for research and normally you would just get uh, percentage bonuses for buildings uh, as you can see um, with their research buildings here later on so yeah that extra point of raw production can work out very very well so i think the drenching are arguably quite good at tech early game but maybe later game the uh higher percentage bonuses that other races can probably get uh probably take over uh for the research i would uh yeah theorize so i think i am going to go for that next uh, yeah, but that's debatable. Maybe I should just go for the speed, frankly. Uh, it's going to take 
five turns and then I'll switch back to the speed I think um, yeah so I'll be upgrading those soon to the research ones uh, this can come down here if I had found another planet to colonize then maybe I would go towards that instead of colonizing that now but um, yeah definitely going over there for the time being ah and we've actually found the Galactic Bazaar. This feature was added, I believe, in the Mercenaries expansion. And uh, there's, of course, a new uh, research, not research, it's um resource, I should say, feature with the Galactic Bazaar that's been added in Intrigue. Uh, but we can't quite use that yet. So I'll be talking more about it later on, though. So let's uh, see what exactly he's got. So in the Mercenaries expansion with this, they added ships uh, yeah so basically you can buy these ships and they all do uh, rather different things and give some really nice bonuses to say the least and uh, that's what is that that's a survey ship 10 moves what's the sensors only two okay well I can actually afford that I'll have to have a think if I want to buy that uh, this is slightly random each and every time so you won't always see the same ships turn up here. Uh, ooh, that could use that for terraforming certain worlds. Uh, right. Okay, I'm going to have to uh, have a think about if I want to buy that or that here. Oh, wow. Okay, i got a feeling I'm definitely going to want to buy that. Extra moves and sensor ranges is fantastic. That's going to be for early on. Uh, all of these other ones later on are locked currently. They're opened up by uh, getting to a certain age within the tech tree and locking a certain amount of techs. Okay, so should I buy this? I think the answer to that is yes, so yes, basically. I would say that this is potentially overpowered, in fact. Uh, basically, you can see some of its stats down here. So it's got 12 moves at this stage of the game. Yeah, what did my colony ship have? Three moves? <laughs> That's quite a difference. Uh, also sensor range, I can basically see 13 tiles with that and it's got a massive range, I can go across the whole map with this ship. It doesn't have any defences though, so I definitely wouldn't want to run into pirates, which on this difficulty have a movement of about 6 and they used to have like movements of 1 or 2, so that's quite a difference. But since we have such a massive sensor range, in theory we shouldn't uh, run into them too easily. So this is going to allow me to scout out potential colonizable uh, worlds very early on. And that's a massive bonus. A uh, massive advantage. So uh, yeah, uh, let's hire this mercenary. Uh, what was that one again? Oh, that's actually got a slight amount of attack on it. And it's a survey ship. This one isn't a survey ship, so I can't use this to get anomalies, whereas I could do that. I could, in theory, buy both. But, hmm, I don't think I will. I think the cost will actually go up if I hire that mercenary anyway. Yeah, so that went up a bit. I'm not sure exactly what percentage amount there. But, um, I may buy that later on when I get a bit more cash. But, uh, I could do with getting some anomalies to get some cash. Uh, since, uh, yeah, I've, uh, spent that. So, is there any others here that I should be thinking of getting? That morale one I definitely want to get at some point. Uh, most of these are scouts by the looks of it. Um, what about that? It's a resource yield. Maybe that one at some point. Uh, to colonize certain worlds if I can't colonize them otherwise. That one you can make a case for, for the extra production bonus. Uh, okay, I don't think there's anything spectacular other than that though. Right, excellent. So, that's where this guy's ship happens to be and all of those ships have uh, yeah, really unique models. You can see in more detail there. So I think what I'm going to do... Oh wow! Well, uh, that's already revealed planets and uh, some particularly good ones as well. So that's a precursor world which uh, you can only get if you've got the precursor mini DLC. And wow! Five Promethean on it extra raw production, it's not great on food, especially, yeah, and uh, synthetic life like the Yore the civilization uh, can't have many pops on it. 
Rex is actually a food resource on it, even though it's not great for food. But yeah, no, it's only size 11, but I can colonize that straight away. That world, I can't. That's a toxic world. I'm going to have to get a tech before I can colonize that. That could cause issues if someone else would colonize it. Uh, yeah, that's something I'll be talking more about later. Uh, the Weltmacht uh, number two is over there. Looks half decent planet. Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do with this um, censorship basically is probably loop around here. And I'll bring this up here maybe. Maybe I'll come down here with it as well. And uh, okay, so this is uh, looking like a pretty damn good start so far. So that concludes the first video of this Let's Play series. I'd just like to thank you for watching. There's plenty more videos to come and I hope you check them out. I'd be extremely appreciative if you were to leave this video and any videos of mine that you enjoy a like. If you have any comments or questions about this Let's Play series, please ask away in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please consider doing so. There's plenty more Galsa 3 content that you may want to check out and many other games besides. And uh, coming up in the outro screen video, there are also links that you may want to uh, click on uh, should you wish to check out my other content and uh, yeah, future videos in this Let's Play. So I think that pretty much concludes everything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.